this is Toji Fushiguro, one of the most powerful fighters in all of the Jujutsu world. Powerful enough that he beat Geto, Dagon, and even Gojo. And yet, his clan still treated him like garbage purely because he didn't have cursed energy. Even going as far as giving him his legendary scar. So why didn't he take revenge? And if he wanted to, could he have taken revenge? Let's try to find out. And especially for this video, I went through every member of the Zenin clan at the time to see how Toji would do against every single one of them. As soon as I asked the question, why didn't he do it in the first place? I'm ready to bet that a lot of you said something like, well, it's for his son, Megumi. And this is totally true. But the thing is, before Megumi is even born, Toji is already in an age where he is extremely powerful. This panel specifically proves that Toji is already an adult when Megumi is less than five years old, which means that there is a period of time where he could have done it. So the question is, why didn't he do it? And honestly, the only real clue we have is this panel. While Maki is savagely eliminating the Zenin clan member by member, Ranta Zenin, who basically recognizes how terrible the situation is, screams and announces that unlike Maki, Toji didn't destroy the clan purely on a whim. And I mean, this isn't necessarily true. It's not like this guy is close to Toji or anything. So here are three possibilities. First of all, Toji absolutely never works for free. And considering how powerful the freaking clan was at the time, I totally understand why he wouldn't. Number two, he fully understands that the problem is at the core of the Jujutsu world, not in the Zenin clan. Which means that theoretically, if he did destroy the clan, there would be a worse and more evil clan that would appear shortly after. And what needs to change is not the Zenin clan, it's the Jujutsu society. And number three, which is kind of my personal favorite one, he desperately wanted to prove to the Zenin clan that even though he doesn't have cursed energy, he could be successful in the Jujutsu world. And in a way, this third theory was kind of confirmed when he fights Gojo. Because in that moment, Toji states that when he was in front of the most powerful sorcerer of this entire generation, he just couldn't pass the opportunity. Because it's basically a once in a lifetime chance to prove the Zenin clan wrong once and for all. So what happens if Toji actually decides and go through with it? But well, first, we have to establish how powerful he would have been. And according to this panel, he is pretty rusty when fighting Gojo. So we can kind of assume that he used to be either approximately as strong, if not even stronger than he was during his fight with Gojo. And even though he is arguably pretty young at that point, you need to remember that Maki Zenin destroyed the Zenin clan when she was only 17 years old. So I'm definitely going to be using her as reference. Now we have to find out all the people that he actually would fight which we can very conveniently do thanks to Maki kind of doing the same thing in the manga. And in order of power, we have the Kukuru Squad, which let's be honest, if you're any kind of sorcerer, I'm pretty sure you can take them. So this one easily goes to Toji. Next, we have the Hei, which is a squad of sorcerers that are all semi-grade one or above. But honestly, from his fight against Dagon, it would be so difficult to argue that Toji isn't at least a special grade. So regardless of the members of the Hei at the time, it's super unlikely that they would do anything to Toji, especially considering how easily Maki destroyed them. And now we have the Chief of the Hei, which starts becoming a little more delicate. And if the Chief of the Hei at the time is anything like Naoya, well, this one pretty easily goes to Toji. But now we finally get the final bosses of the Zenin clan which could become much, much more challenging for Toji. The manga actually confirms that Naobito Zenin was still the head of the clan at the time. And unlike what we see of him in the manga, he used to be much younger, which probably means he used to be much more powerful. But if we refer to his fight against Dagon in the manga, he doesn't do well at all, especially considering Maki was there. And the sad thing is once Toji appears, he totally annihilates Dagon. So ultimately, I think that regardless of the age difference between those two, Toji would take it fairly easily. And finally, we have Ogi Zenin, who does kind of imply that he used to be the strongest member of the clan. And the only reason he didn't actually become head of the clan is because of his daughters. And listen, I'd love to make the argument that he could put up a good fight against Toji. But the truth is, once Maki unlocks her full potential, she basically one-shots him. Which means that if Toji decided to destroy the Zenin clan, he could have done it. And he could have done it easily. And even though Toji is one of the coolest characters in this entire series, you can find way more information in this video.